Well, after another day of long speculation, yes, a RV still has not been shipped out of Edmonton, but expected more than likely to be another healthy scratch ahead of the game against the Tampa Bay Lightning. That really just based on the results from the Edmonton Oilers game last night, in which the Oilers go 11-7 and somehow, some way, all the guys possible in the depth scoring that you would want to show up outside of the third line show up and score depth goals. So that was a pretty big get for the Oilers. And now, right we enter day two of this when will Yesa RV be traded trade speculation friends this is Dolany TV good afternoon welcome back to the channel you see I'm sitting in a different kind of position than I normally do on camera because I want to highlight the Yesa RV jersey simply for this discussion today before we get too far into today's video though I know the housekeeping notes some people big fans some people not so much all I'll say is I gotta do it because it works if you're new to the channel, I want you to consider hitting that subscribe button here on Dolony TV this past week, crossing 10,000 subscribers, and I have yet to see in the entirety of being an Oilers YouTuber the momentum here on the channel that we have gained since going to 10,000, so thank you, and if you'd be so kind to consider doing it if you haven't already or haven't had a chance to check out Dolony TV, hey! Here's your chance right now. Let's get to it. All right. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Yes, a Pooley RV trade. Yes, this is the biggest thing we're talking about in Oilers land in terms of roster moves. Yesterday, activating Evander Kane, putting Kyler Yamamoto on LTIR alongside Ryan Murray. So that's solved for now. But now all of a sudden, yes, Pooley RV was a healthy scratch last night. And he, alongside Fogel and Ryan, who both scored last night, were placed on the open trade block within NHL circles yesterday midday. So now we get to looking at exactly what we're here to do with the video today. Three teams that could potentially trade for Yesa Pugliarvi. Who's it going to be? I think right off the bat, you see in the title, you know why you're here. But just to refresh you, the Columbus Blue Jackets, mainly because of the Patrick Line A fit. It has been long, long, long rumored that if anything does not work out for Pugliarvi in Edmonton, Columbus is a potential home. Secondary to that is Carolina. Same exact thing because of Sebastian Ajo. So you've got Line in Columbus, Sebastian Ajo in Carolina, and both those two guys form a basis point for why either team would trade for Yesa Pugliarvi. So that's number one, right? Is Think about those two teams. But then last night, and kind of we've been roped along by either the media or by fan sites or by just the general consensus within fan bases across the NHL, that Boston now all of a sudden makes sense for the Edmonton Oilers to trade Yesa Pugliarvi to. I'll tell you, based on these three teams and why I'm not including the Anaheim Ducks in this today is because right now, this is what the Oilers benefit from most. If you trade Pugliarvi to either Boston, Columbus, or Carolina, you don't have to worry about facing them in the cup final until the cup final. And that's the big thing here is those are three big dog teams in the East in terms of, I mean... I guess Columbus is not. I misspoke there. Uh, Carolina, Boston are big dog teams, and then Columbus you wouldn't have to worry about at all. And uh, both the big dogs there in the East could potentially get uh, out in the first three rounds before you have to get to the cup final, although the dot does not seem likely for the Bruins this season. So we'll start with the Columbus Blue Jackets because I want to take a look at kind of the conditions of which a yes of Pugliarvi trade has to happen. For the Oilers... I think there's a lot of appetite to obviously dump the salary, take a low-end pick, and you know what, just move on. And the biggest thing that you get out of anything is obviously the saved space in terms of the salary cap, and suddenly that's how you afford Yamamoto. Things just start bing-bang booming for you for the Oilers and everything right there. However... Columbus, like a lot of other NHL teams, in the LTIR market right now affording their rosters. Yes, I know, it's unrealistic to expect a trade because you're an LTIR. That's what people are pounding into my head in the comments section every time I talk about a video over the past week here on Dolan TV. I'm not frustrated by that, but I'm also saying that is not an excuse because end of the day is if no team can make a trade, then why are insiders even bothering to talk about trades? Right? It's not me generating this. This is me talking about what's generated. So 
when it looks at Columbus, okay, you're probably taking a roster player back for Pooley RV if you are moving salary, $3 million of it, to Columbus for Pooley RV to go there. Now, that brings up an interesting guy, in my opinion, uh, 29-year-old Sean Corelli, who's currently signed to a $2.5 million contract right now and for the next two years following. So it's cost certainty for the Edmonton Oilers two years after. And you look at kind of what Sean Corelli's done this year, kind of reverse splits from Yessa Pugliarvi in a way, 42 games, eight goals, four assists. Um, really, he's been a player with Boston Bruins over the course of his career and then the last this season and past with the Columbus Blue Jackets last season having a career-high 30 points. So you're talking about a player that's very dynamically similar to Yessa Puliarvi in the sense of, right, the production isn't amazing. You're not asking too much out of a guy in the bottom six and you can just kind of get him in there. And that's kind of where I'd look is, I'm not saying it's yes, Pooley RV for Sean Crowley. I'm saying that's kind of a basis point of kind of how I would start setting up the trade if I was looking from both ends of salary in, salary out, and then picks and stuff, everything from there. You take your look, figure out how you want that one to shake out. It is fine and dandy if you don't agree with Sean Crowley even, but you get an understanding right there is you got to take money in, money out in the Columbus situation due to the LTIR. So we now head to Carolina, who is again as well in the LTIR situation. So we'll take a look there if there's anything we can find here that would allow the Oilers to get it going. And I think this one is maybe almost too obvious. I, I should have known this one before even clicking onto the Carolina Hurricanes Page is Martin Nakis, right? I think that's a guy that for a long time has been rumored to be a part of a Yesa Pugliarvi deal in case the Oilers trade him away. That said, though, over the past three years, four years, he's been a 40-point-plus player. So for the Oilers, in a way, do you want to, uh, I mean, maybe out of anything, this would be where you're looking to upgrade, more or less, by bringing in a guy like Martin Nakis, who's signed to a $3 million contract, can play right wing, can play center. He's from the Czech Republic, if you needed to know that. 24 years old, right hand shot. So there's a little bit of benefit there on the salary side as it's a straight across exchange for a guy who currently in 44 games has 39 points. There in that, though, I pretty much eliminated Martin Nashas because of the production this year, right? As over his career, that's what he's produced in a regular season, and now he's done it in half a year. So again, kind of steer clear of that one a little bit, I guess you could say, but again, that's one I think if the Oilers are looking upgrade, they could find a way to package in Pugliarvi with a pick or with a prospect of maybe get Martin Nashkes onto the net, uh, I can't pronounce his name to save my life, but onto the team for a playoff run, right? It's, it's, it's one thing that I think all us Oilers guys go on about is yes, Apuliarvi is going to be used more than likely in a trade to upgrade the Oilers, right? You got to take that salary so as you can bring someone to, in to upgrade. But then you look at bringing in Martin Nakis, uh, giving up a second round pick and a prospect, whatever else it takes with Apuliarvi to get it done, just so as you can go straight across salary. That would be a low key, really bold move by Ken Holland and two, a very valuable move for Ken Holland to kind of shore up the top six in case Kyler Yamamoto cannot continue to play right wing this season for us and shelfs himself until that big old time playoff time that's looking closer and closer by the day. There really isn't anyone else that the Oilers could go after that would really allow you to clear the salary. I guess Jesper Faust would be another name right in there and uh, to Jordan Martinook and Martinook really good but these are guys that I think Carolina is attached to and this is the other problem too here is Carolina would more than likely be your destination where you're probably just dumping off Pooley RV for a pick low end whatever I said so that's kind of the other side too is, I mean, yes, you have to make the salary work, but I guess it all depends on how it all shakes out. I think for the Oilers though, end of day is looking at Carolina's situation and rumoring how long it's been for Carolina to be a part of Yes Puliarvi talks. I think Martin Nakes is all I want as an Oilers fan. I don't care how we get it. As long as Puliarvi goes that way, no salaries exchange is three for three. 
and whatever is going back to Carolina, I'll take Martin Akis this year and uh, hopefully run into the playoffs pretty deep. Now, you look at the Boston Bruins, who are again in the LTIR bonus pool here, and this is where it gets tricky again, because how do you dump Yes Puliarvi for a pick? I mean, it's the old adage here in the Dolany TV comment section. Oh, we'll just dump Yes Puliarvi for a pick. There are very few teams you can do that to, and uh, a lot of them, you don't want to do that necessarily. So for the Boston Bruins right now, there really isn't anyone of substance that I think you would want to go out and trade for, I guess you could say. Although on the back end there, if you could somehow weasel your way into getting Derek Forbert onto this Edmonton Oilers team, currently signed for $3 million this year and currently signed for $3 million the next year, that's potentially a guy, big left-hand shot D-man that you could look at adding. Right, he's six foot four, two nineteen, no movement clause. Same thing with Sean Crowley, I forgot to mention. But you're looking at a guy again, straight salary swap, and now, as I said, there was a little bit of rumor there from Brad Marchand kind of spoiling around in Bruins Twitter, messing with the fans, I think more or less is what it was. But uh Brad Marchand saying uh the shush emoji to one of uh the fan sites in the Bruins circles, uh locked on Bruins, I believe was who it was. And uh Right, so yes, Puliarvi, if there is anything truth to that, again, how do the Bruins afford it if they don't move salary in, salary out? $3 million Derek Forbert for $3 million, yes, Puliarvi. Whatever it costs the Oilers, an additional capital to get Forbert coming back, hey, I'm fine with that because that six foot four, two nineteen, I think that fits the profile of that defenseman that we're looking at. Oh, what's his name? Vladislav. Gavrikov? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, friends, that's just a fun, pointed look at kind of summarizing my thoughts on three teams that have long been rumored or are heavily rumored as of late to be interested in Yesa Puliarvi. And now that we are fully talking to Yesa Puliarvi trade because of the healthy scratch and obviously being placed on the trade block, it is now of the essence to talk about it today. And I thank you for tuning in. I'm Tyson, this Stolony TV. Like I said, if you haven't had a chance yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button on your way out and I will catch you in the next one.